Now, the position of trade envoy has been a controversial one in this country lately, but you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who doesn't think the Brits have hit a six with their choice for Down Under. One of, if not the greatest all-rounder cricket has ever seen, Sir Ian Botham, has taken on the task of selling the UK to Australian business and, he says, vice versa. Now, I watched the charismatic personality in action in a room full of bigwigs for just an hour and I can tell you he is pretty convincing. Business Sydney hosted an event and asked me to chat to the man they call Beefy. We covered trade, obviously, cricket, his career and the latest headlines on David Warner and Pat Cummins. Plus, and of course, I had to ask Harry and Meghan. But I began by questioning him about his new role. What did you understand the role to be when you were first asked and what do you understand it to be now? Well, typical of myself, I accepted it and then I thought afterwards, <laughs> what am I meant to do now? <laughs> and uh, bull, in the, bull in the get charged. But uh, no, uh, um, look, uh, it's a long process. You don't uh, understand everything overnight. And I've picked up on a lot of stuff and I've enjoyed it. I've been fascinated by the work ethic of some of the people and what the house, how hard they've worked to get their companies to where they are. And I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. My knowledge is expanding. And my teachers at school would never believe that I'd actually say that because <laughs> my school reports were very much the same every year. Could do better. <laughs> um, um, let me ask you, David Warner, very curious to know your thoughts on... <laughs> it's not that controversial, is it? And you can, I mean, you're very experienced. You can tell me to sod off if you don't want to answer any of my questions. But we'd love to hear your perspective on this. What are your thoughts on, A, whether or not he should be able to move into a leadership position and, B, his wife and he have spoken quite openly today about the impact it's had on them and their children and that it's unfair to a degree? Look, you, you've done the, you did the crime, he's done the time. So, as far as I'm concerned, that's Australia's problem, not mine. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Such an English cricketer you are. <laughs> but, uh, look, you know, at the end of the day, um, I don't really know David that well. I know a lot of the other guys, uh, but I don't really know them uh, as well as some. And look, they've all, they all sing his praises. Um, so I, who, who am I to judge? Pat Cummins. Now, I know your thoughts on the BBC <laughs> prosecuting a woke agenda. You've been very vocal on that. Well, you were a couple of years ago. What do you think about Pat Cummins and athletes in, in positions of leadership taking stances that, that some determine are hypocritical because of other areas that they're willing to benefit from, but athletes in general using their platform to speak about things that they care about or to maybe influence the sponsorship that is able to be a part of a sporting body? Well, when I played, um, there wouldn't have been any discussion at all about who was sponsoring because we'd have grabbed it yeah. and just taken it. Um, look, I, I think players nowadays, they're travelling more. Um, uh, Pat Cummins, I've, he's always struck me as a really good, good guy. I've met him a few times. I think he's a terrific bowler. Uh, I, I wondered how he'd do as captain, but he's done well. Um, so, yeah, look, I, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but the one question I always have for the guys, and it's the same as the protesters in England, and they're entitled to protest, if that's what they think. But if you want to glue yourself to a railing, my attitude would be, well, I'm going to leave you there and see how long it takes you to get off it. <laughs> but but that's, that's, that's the way I see it. But... Um, no, I, I just think that uh, if, you, if you think it's, uh, and I've said this to people, well, okay, fine, but what are you going to replace it with? Oh, well, I haven't thought of that. When we had the Laurier Sports Award, the in, inaugural um, gathering, with there was about 40 uh, old has been sportsmen on the stage, and Nelson Mandela got up, and I will always remember this for the rest of my life, and it's been quoted many times now, but I was stood there with him when he said it, and he just simply said, uh, when questioned about uh, wh where the sport should go, he said, look, at the end of the day, sportsmen will break down more barriers than politicians will ever achieve. And I think that's a way of looking at it and perhaps make your own mind up from there. But if he said it, it's good enough for me. No, I think absolutely powerful words. Uh, it's a hard segue <laughs> now to go from someone like him. Actually, I think Meghan Markle did make the comparison at some stage. <laughs> but <laughs> to, I know. Uh, to Meghan and Harry, you're British. Uh, the documentary on Netflix comes out today. And this wasn't in my list of approved questions, I know, but you can tell me again 
to sod off if um, you so wish. But, but what do you think of Meghan and Harry? Well, very simply, I haven't seen it. I don't want to see it. And I'm certainly not going to read a book. So um, I have no idea what they're saying. I don't want to know. I really don't. I have no interest in that whatsoever. I think there's one of the saddest moments in, in recent months was the passing of the Queen. Yeah. Because I think she, um, she gave me my knighthood. Uh, and, and she asked me, she said, uh, quite amusingly, because you go up there and you get immediately stood up and then she engages you in conversation. And she said to me, she said, uh, Ian, you know I'm not particularly fond of cricket. <laughs> I said, yes, ma'am. But she said, tell me about the charity work you do. And I spoke to her, and it was about three minutes, four minutes. And yet she had another 99 people to do as so I was second up there. And she, every single one she spoke to and spoke in, you know, in depth. And most of the time without any prompting. Yeah. Uh, she's a remar was an absolutely remarkable leader. And uh, I think that uh, people, we will certainly honour her uh, existence and her life and what she gave us. Um, and I think that um, she would be bitterly disappointed with a lot of the things that have gone on recently. And what about our Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese? Have you met him, first no, of all? No, no. Will you meet him at some stage? Surely. Well, I hope so. And well, I mean, just... Shaquille O'Neal met him. Surely you're up there. <laughs> <laughs> <Who>? <laughs> yeah, he's very good value.